I think you should homebrew like a really light lager and call it 15G. Welcome in, everybody, to the Craft Beer Republic. Thanks for drinking. Thanks for joining. I am Greg. I'm being joined by old man Flex over there. What's up, buddy? Oh, I uh, pulled my back out, lotioning up my meaty quads the other day. Uh, Is that a true story? Yeah, 100% accurate. Uh, 34 (laughs) years old, pulling my back out, lotioning up meaty quads. Wow. That is, uh, I tell you, my most embarrassing was... I sneezed when I was emptying the dishwasher one time, and I was like bent over, sneezed. I was done for like a week. It was, <laughs> I've, <laughs> I've, actually, I've, I've heard of that one before. I really have. That was you're, so you're not bad. alone, man. Yeah. Oh god, I felt like such an old fart. <laughs> uh, and then joining us to class this place up a little bit, he is the founder and executive editor of San Diego Beer News, Brandon Hernandez. How's it going, buddy? It's going great. You know, I'm uh, 46 years old. I ran six miles before I got on with you guys and nothing happened. What the hell's wrong with you guys? We're not taking our vitamins and saying our prayers. I need to turn 46. (laughs) That's what I'm saying. (laughs) Maybe the 30s are rougher on the back than the 40s are. It's got to be. You're you're just adjusting. See, by the time you get to my place, it'll be all good. You can load all the dishes you want. (laughs) <laughs> I can't wait for that day. My <laughs> wife will be so happy. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. I also forget what it's like to run, but we'll we'll address that another time. Yeah, uh, I, so I don't much, do that. Yeah. <laughs> you just lift. <laughs> Yours are all pretty muscles. They're not useful. Not at all. Yeah. Unless you, you need like a refrigerator move, and then You're I'm right. your guy. <laughs> you got a good five minutes in you. <laughs> uh, so much to get to today. We're going to talk to Brandon about uh, San Diego beer news and what's going on in San Diego. We got a voicemail from the homie Chu. We got uh, a lot of brewing recaps to get to and uh, a lot of research. Some yeah, big you, news. You had a busy weekend, didn't you? Man, I had a very hydrated and busy weekend. Still, I can't, can't wait to hear about that. Bit. Yeah. And in fact, I pounded some coffee before the show started. That's. That's the kind of weekend I had. Wow, it's 7 o'clock, Rick. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's 7 o'clock my time. It's going to be a long night. Uh, some breaking news to get to and so much more. Before we get into anything, though, I'm feeling quite sober and I need to counteract the f- effects of the weekend. So uh, if you guys don't mind, I'm going to plunge into the first beer real quick. Well, in honor of Brandon being from San Diego, I found San Diego beer to drink tonight. I am drinking Pure Brewings, Pure Project Brewings, Monteverde. This was brewed for their seven-year anniversary. It's 6.6%, has a 4.11 on Untapped. Very respectable for the angry mob that is Untapped. From the brewery, (laughs) they say, Monteverde, or Green Mountain, was named after the remarkable Monteverde Cloud Forest Reserve in Costa Rica. The Canar is donning a scenic green and green and blue hued backdrop of jungle and mountains, and it's an ode to the wondrous, lush, and biodiverse place. We hopped this murky IPA with Nectaron at the front and added in some mosaic and citra for even more flavor and balance. The result is a murky pale colored brew with fruity aromas of passion fruit, orange, and dried mango. Sips are filled with tastes of passion fruit, pear, and juicy peach over a subtle dankness. Made to celebrate, Monteverde is a true pura bira experience. Ooh, that was okay. a, Doesn't it sound awful? I mean, those hops suck. <laughs> yeah, that's a bunch of horrible hops in there, right? <laughs> you know, I really do like seeing Nectaron come up a lot more lately. I feel like that's going to be the hop of 2023. Interesting. We'll see uh, where that goes. Uh, on yeah, the sniffer, or HBC 586, or oh, yeah. that, that's been around for a few years now. I'm waiting for that one to get its own name. Yeah, let's start a petition. Wow. Name the hops. Uh, I'm trying to run. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, on the schnoz over here, very light, uh, a little bit tropical, but mostly orange. Picking up the orange on the schnoz, the flavor really follows behind that with a lot of orange up front. Some like dried tropical fruits kind of like a like a mango gummy bear or something kind of coming up behind it there real soft mouthfeel just a delicious and and flex for the algorithm this can art is 
Uh, you know, fantastic. you were describing the can art, and the first thing that crossed my mind is that sounds sexy. <laughs> and now that you're showing me, I can confirm that that is definitely some sexy can art. It is quite sexy. <laughs> Pure's always knocking it out when they uh, go big on their can art, so uh, very, very delicious. Yeah, I just either, wish they... either they keep it simple, or they just do something Yeah, not, I don't want to say like so overly detailed, but it's, it's like there's Gorgeous. no... Spectra, it's like on one side of the spectrum and the other. Maybe I'll they rip do, it off they, the can and frame it. Yeah, do that. But yeah, yeah. they do a brilliant job with everything all around. Yes. Very yeah, those, those guys and uh, down here also a Virgin Beer Company, they, they're they really mm. good at taking, not a template, but you know, something very recognizable and just making each beer look so cool. And and oftentimes, I mean, like for real, sexy. Right. Like, yeah, I, yeah, I don't 100%, know what beer's yeah. in there, but I, I'm in. Let's do it. So Yeah, it's one of those ones where you look at it, you go, I'm going to need to try that. I don't even care what it is. Yeah, Al algorithm aside, right? Doesn't yeah. even matter what, what the price is. <laughs> that can art so great. Yeah, you got to get into it. Flex has an algorithm. It's it's price to ABV to can art, and it's all got to work out. Like it can't be too expensive. You know, you don't right. want a four percenter that costs twenty five bucks for a four pack. That's insane. There's there's an algorithm to this thing. That'd be one hell of a table beer. <laughs> yeah right <laughs> triple dry hopped with nectar on right there it four, is <laughs> four percent you can drink it all day never feel it yeah gotta be efficient yeah so uh brandon if i if i may uh talk about san diego beer news for a little bit i've been you following may. yeah please i've been following you guys well mainly you right you're you're the lone ranger yeah, behind most I, of it i would it. say i'm about 97.5 percent of it but we have we do have people who contribute guest columns that are and they're really good. It's there's they're a little bit free, few and far between, but yeah, it's mostly a uh, overblown passion project turned into a full blown business here. So that's, wow, that's living the dream. One of these days, Flex and I will make money or at least get enough free beer to make it. Yeah, worth one it. of these days, or just yeah. somebody send me a hat. <laughs> exactly. That's a, uh, <laughs> any, beggars any, can't be choosers, man. Right. They just need a hat. <laughs> Take what we can get around here. <laughs> yeah. Anytime I'm heading down to San Diego, I always make sure to to hop on the website, see if there's anything new that I need to check out. Uh, any new breweries or anything like that. Uh, do you have any favorite up and coming breweries that are popping up in San Diego? It's always hard to say favorites, but I mean, people that are up and coming, I think that Seek Beer Company has made a huge name for so itself good. really quickly in a lease to brew suite down here in North Park, our North Park area, which is uh, completely saturated with breweries, but they're really good. And it's it's always a very fun time spent down there. But uh, yeah, uh, came from uh, Houston, Texas and um urban south brewery and just mm -hmm. completely has knocked it out of the park for the first year and been really impressive like that uh not as new but open in 2020 so during the last three years that feel like i don't know five days of weirdness or or 50 uh, years who knows yeah yeah exactly exactly uh craft coast beer and tacos in oceanside is a okay. rad place from a, a former pizza port brewer he basically uh set up a place that celebrates the specifically like the san diego socal style of taco shop so that kind of food plus beers that are very they, they very much have roots in the pizza port you know west coast ipas there's hazy ipas there's great lagers um right. but um yeah it's it's kind of like a, a an interesting spin on that model and it's it's in this part of uh oceanside that's just blowing up so those are two that i really really enjoy um but man you, you could throw a stick as far as you can throw it, which wouldn't be too far. Okay, wait a second. Um, you can't not find a good brewery in San Diego. No. I mean, no matter where you're at, you are within easy driving distance. It's not like you got to want it and you go 25 miles or something right. like that. It's Stumbling like getting, distance. There's something around. So yeah, like come come to our website, it's San Diego Beer News, and we always have the uh, updated list of all the breweries. So over 200 spots. Yeah, and and wow. to double up on uh, Seek, we were there in June and. Uh, Hadn't even heard of them. One of the guys we're with is like, hey, we got to try Seek. Um, like, yeah, okay, whatever that is. And we rolled in. And then the brewer was there. We met the brewer, found out that he was from Urban oh, nice. South. And super oh, so you nice heard guy. That, that, you heard that drawl. Yeah, you heard exactly. That, 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 speaking of sexy, now that's a voice. <laughs> <laughs> got to get him doing some voiceover work. His accents go, in Dave. general. Yeah. Yeah. Except so. for Midwest. Right. <laughs> Can't um, stand my Midwest accent. A hoser. <laughs> I guess it's more Canadian, uh, yeah. but yeah, met him super nice. Got some pictures with him. He, you know, made us basically drink all of his beers, which was, that was such a shame. Yeah, it was had to choke him down. Um, 
so so good what he's doing up there so i can't wait till his cans start making it up a little north to where i'm hanging because that is some good beer he's making down there and i have a feeling i know where he's at he's in the old epic spot which right. is really sort of like a developmental spot until you can get a real production brewery, uh, you know, bigger production brewery. So yeah, exactly. I'm hoping that happens sooner than later so we can really start working on some distro. I have to think that there's got to at least be the beginnings of some kind of talk towards that happening. But, um, you know, when the time's right, he'll definitely have a fan base already built. And speaking of can art, he has really cool can art that he does himself. So that's oh, he's how the much artist? That, yeah. Yeah. People see his art and they're like, man, who does your cans? And it's, usually him that's wow, awesome. that's awesome yeah he see he takes the uh, san diego beer news approach to having a business it's pretty much him doing everything just him doing him everything and wife, yeah. him, and his, <laughs> him and his wife are just knocking everything out just like me so it's pretty cool i can definitely respect what he's got going but i haven't seen a brewery take off quite like seek has in in quite some time so it's been awesome to see yeah he definitely knows what he's doing and flex just for reference that was the brewery where we were all just starting to get our buzz on and we tried to call you when we were all <laughs> Oh, around. that's the spot. Okay, yeah. And, and you wouldn't Flex. answer the phone because it was night night time for Flex. Flex was sleepy by. <laughs> oh, that was a, that was like a, a time zone thing, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, no, if it's any time after you... eight o'clock here, I'm usually sleeping. Okay. Yeah. Well, like, you are 34. I mean, I am old man Flex, <laughs> and I'm sticking to it. He really, really does. Yeah, I'm not even kidding. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's like <laughs> this is the latest I stay up on any given night. Well, thank you. I feel honored now. <laughs> Strictly awesome. for podcasting. Yeah, Monday nights are his big night. <laughs> uh, and as far as like trends going on in San Diego, beer wise, any any new trends? Uh, I know, kind of California wise, cold IPAs have finally started to calm down, and thank God they have because that name is horrible. But um, <laughs> anything going Just on call down them IPLs, there? IPLs. It's all good. Yeah, that's what it's what they are. They're IPLs, and IPLs are delicious. Stop. Stop marketing them to Hayes boys. My favorite was exactly. the uh, when they market them as West Coast Pilsners. That that's my real favorite. I've had a couple breweries out this way do that, and uh, it's just a nice little chuckle. Yeah, I had a brewer tell me over the weekend we were doing a collab brew. And like, yeah, that's just uh, I I fuck up a pills and I dump a bunch of hops in it, and all of a sudden it's a West Coast Pils. <laughs> <laughs> but yep, save that batch. Anyway, yeah. so so any any fun trends? Trend wise, I mean, I think that we're kind of like on with all the trends the cold ipa thing is is living large here um you know loggers do so well around here and um seeing all styles of them and i, I think it's a little bit of time to get the australian sparkling ale or whatever you want to call it out here but we're starting to see a few more of those around and um and tons of just we have tons of dry hops any kind of lager you can think of at all Delicious. times. It's, it's really great. It goes with the weather. Not not lately. We actually had some weather this year. Yeah. But, uh, before you know it, that sun will be back and it's going to be rad. The good thing about San Diego is that everything's being made at all times. There's not a, there's, it's not really so much about the trends. People dabble in them at all, but yeah, for the most part, you can find just about anything. So it's kind of hard to pick up the trends, which I, I really like. But I, I guess the big trend here is that you know, for a while we were known for having a lot of the larger breweries in the state and in the country and uh, places that have gone on to uh, like the next phase of their lives. And what we've seen here for the past five years, I'd say um, five to seven years, maybe is just this return to small breweries opening mm -hmm. up that just service their finite community, because we have one of the most expansive counties in all of uh, all of the country really so uh a lot of people are now really into just being a brewer having a brewing company as their livelihood and servicing the people right around them all of their friends and neighbors and they're really not concerned about getting bigger or opening a satellite tasting room or becoming the next say like a, a stone or, or ballast point or something like that and following yeah. in those footsteps they just want to do what they want to do which kind of harkens back to how beer started in the first place back in the old world it was like, right. okay, well, here's here's the village. Here's the one guy who makes beer. That's our beer. So it's kind of fun to see. And there's this whole like ultra locavorianism that, that happens around it. But um, that's a trend that is now just really defined. Nobody's opening up like, I'm going to be huge. It's all, I'm going to be really small. And I love that. Yeah. So that's the biggest trend. Well, I feel like it, it's easy like to, I shouldn't say it's easy to do that in California, but I feel like that's the way to go because there's so many breweries all over the place that if you have that mentality to open up like i'm going to be the big shit you're probably not going to succeed 
because if you have that mentality, but your beer's not good, yeah. you know, like that, that's not going to get you anywhere. Yeah. Yeah. And then yeah. there's so many other places around that people are going to be like, Hey, this beer isn't very good. Let's head over here where I can throw a stick and we'll get good <laughs> beer there instead. Right. Bring back well, a stick. Yeah. <laughs> you never, you never let go of the stick. <laughs> Never. You throw it and you pick it back up and you throw it again. Well, and, and speaking of the whole small brewery model, that leads in perfectly to sort of what I was going to ask you next. I was going to ask you okay. about what you thought your most underrated brewery is and in, in the area. The one I tell people, whenever people tell me I'm going to San Diego, where should I go? I always tell them my favorite spot, most underrated brewery. They don't distribute. They don't can. They hardly even send out any kegs. And that is Helix Brewing. Oh, yeah. Helix is great. And, uh, doesn't get talked about nearly enough. I love the I love that campus. You know, you walk in there and you got two buildings. One on the yeah. side is like all the fresh beers, and then the other side they have the their sour works. S O U R W O R X, and uh, it's just really a really cool dichotomy. But yeah, great hoppy beers. I mean, especially yeah. if you like hoppy beers, that's the place to go. And it's in La Mesa, um, in, out in kind of like the beginnings of our East County, so it's not even in kind of the place. You're not going to stumble upon Helix, most likely. <laughs> right. Um, for me, uh, another place that's very much like that, they do um, They do can, but they've been around for, gosh, must be almost 15 years, if not more. Uh, New English Brewing. And mm. that's a brewery out in a place called Sorrento Valley. Okay. Uh, kind of on the west, getting close to La Jolla and Del Mar on the coast over there. But it's this Englishman who came over. Him and his wife built this brewery, and they serve fantastic UK styles, but also great West Coast style IPAs and pale ales. Uh, fantastic, just any style that they go for, barley wines, imperial stouts, things like that. They still have a cask engines, which is really cool, and their ESP is just unmatched on that thing. But, you know, people never talk about it. And they never really have because English styles just don't play here big time. Yeah. You know, it, people don't want any kind of lukewarm <laughs> thing with malt driven but that that's why it's so cool because yes those are fantastic and you know benchmarks but at the same time their ipas stand up with all the best ipas that are here in in san diego which is known for its ipa so yeah i would totally do a two for a day and go to helix and go to new english and man super cool great pull on that i love it <laughs> nice i've never been to new english and now that you've said it that's gonna have to be the top of my next trip New English brewing, yeah, and there's, and there's there's other things around it too. So it's like you just, it's just a starting point, but it's like give a little love to that one, and then go find the other cool stuff around it. Yeah, I love it. I love it down there. I love finding new places every time. So uh, I'll stop gushing about San Diego at least eventually. Uh, and no, before I'll, I'll pick, I'll pick up the slack. Yeah, you know, you? if you stop, I'll, <laughs> I'll pick it up. But oh yeah, go to New English and then go to a place called Gravity Heights. I've heard you of Gravity Heights. Later. Okay, I will, yeah. I will hit that up. Uh, before I forget. Don't forget to follow uh, SD Beer News on the gram and the socials at SD Beer News. And like Brandon said, San Diego Beer dot news. Um, all right, Brandon, uh, baseball fan down there. I love Petco Park. Best beers in the, oh, in the yes. country. Yes. Love the Padres. Can't wait. So excited. I need the season to start, though, so that like all the uh, preseason injuries can be over. <laughs> <You know? laughs> I don't know. It's just, man, I love our team, but it's like made of glass professional yeah. sports in a nutshell right there right as a laker getting, fan i know all about that glass right. thing oh yeah, yeah absolutely okay yeah it's rough i, I can't even watch anymore but uh yeah padres <laughs> looking pretty good down there they're they're beating up our team right or a week ago gavin lux is out for the season thanks to you guys yeah that's rough yeah <laughs> i did see that news yeah flex how is your beer selection at your stadium there uh it's Brewers. pretty solid so i haven't been there well, you know, obviously since last year, but they actually... Wait, wait, where is this? Where is this place you're talking about? Milwaukee. Oh, is... Milwaukee? Yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> my other team guy. that I love. <laughs> well, right. He's got the Brewers cap on now. That's great. I love it. I, um, I like the Brewers a lot. I would no say... particular reason. Is it because they have the best name in all of professional sports? Well, they've got the best name. They got the best name. No, I, I, I've been a Brewers fan since I was eight. So, I love Started the Padres because they're home t hometown team. But you know, I think you should get to pick the teams that you like. So yeah, back I agree. Then I did it, and it's been fun. And I believe I can't remember if it was Petals and Pines or if it was Naughty. I think it was Naughty Pine, but somebody from Naughty Pines 
dad or uncle used to play for the Brewers? I don't remember this at all. <laughs> no, they they post somebody posted something about the Brewers on like their page. Oh, and I was okay. like, oh, that's awesome! Like, I love the Brewers from Milwaukee, and they they commented back saying that they have a uh, like their dad used to play on the Brewers or something like that. Oh, interesting. So we're gonna nice. have to dive into that eventually. But uh, a few years back, I want to say like four or five years ago now, they opened up this whole craft beer section in the stadium there's probably like 20 to 30 different local craft beers on tap um they're all like you know 14 to 18 dollars a beer so it's not that's all you know i know you always say that <laughs> and that blows my mind yeah but Dodger uh, stadium man, it's the worst see that's crazy I, 14 I, to 18 dollars for a golden road that's... oh <laughs> so, but, but this craft section you're talking about i haven't been i haven't been there since like 2012 i think Okay, um, yeah, so it's it definitely craft. After that. So it's it's real deal like yeah, local it's craft. legit like local craft, all local wow. stuff. So it's Love super it. nice. And like I said, it was at least when I went, whenever they opened it up, it was like twenty to thirty beers and on the menu they have them all listed by like the you know, beer categories that they are. So like, you know, your wow. IPAs, your stouts, your just all that stuff. It was all separated. So it was super neat. Nice. Yeah, and I would way rather pay that money, though, than for, like, an $11 summer shandy. No offense, <laughs> Line and Kugels, but, yeah, if I'm going to get good beer, I, I will pay the price. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or you want, if you're at a stadium, this is where ABV matters. Like, if you're going to pay $18 for a beer, you want the most out of that $18 you can get. I'm taking yeah. the 10% triple IPA over the pale ale, because I need that $18 to stretch a little well, bit. Do they do Long Islands at Dodger Stadium? Long Island Ice Teas? Yeah. God, I hope not. Oh my gosh. No, see, uh, see all the all the hooligan fans just act like they've had four <laughs> Long Island Ice Teas. I'll say Dodger fans can't be trusted. So that is the most popular beverage in Milwaukee at oh Brewers God. games. That's awful. And uh oh, the, really? Because the, the yeah, the beers run like ten to eleven dollars like per sixteen ounce, and the Long Islands are like twelve bucks. <laughs> All right, well, it makes sense. Oh, well, so, I, I see. I, I don't even need an algorithm for that. That's just easy. Yeah, so there's right like, there. there's one bar outside, you know, connected to the stadium, and you have to walk outside to get there, and I think there's one other spot inside that does it, but yeah, my buddy's got thrown out of the park so many times that he actually got um, the Brewers logo tattooed on the back of his arm, and underneath it, it says, no more Long Islands. <laughs> wow. He, he regrets like, it, see, now, but it's, I, it's... I see that other people would have learned their lesson, but I love that he just embraces it. Yeah, doubles oh, it. Yeah, he loves it. This is lifestyle, baby. <laughs> that's, exact, that's exactly his, his <laughs> mentality in the life. Dominic oh, Toretto boy. of the Brewers yeah. who lives his life one Long Island at a time. <laughs> what can I say? Um, all right, Flex, before we find out what you're drinking, a couple of things to discuss. Brandon, hang out crack-wise with us. Uh, yeah. Quick shout out to Chew. Happy birthday, Chew, your beer. Yeah, happy birthday, Chew. How awesome. Yeah. He, no show uh, would have known. Quite the uh, birthday weekend. I was following along in his stories. And happy birthday to Val, who I have to say that to. It's my sister. Oh, oh Val. <laughs> hey, happy yeah. birthday, Val. Congrats on the engagement. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, that too. Uh, over the weekend, went to Petals and Pints Brewing for their Pink Boots collab. I was uh, invited to that as long as, as well as the wife and a bunch of other fun people. That's what, two or three years in a row now for you, huh? Yeah? yeah, I think that was the second year for Petals. Uh, this was such a blast. We had, obviously, Monica, head brewer Petals, was there. Her husband, James, who works at Ennegrin. Uh, the, the new uh, Bright Spark, Tim and Lindsay, showed up. Chaz from um, Malibu Brewing was there. Some people from Tarantula Hill were there. It, oh, Brittany from Naughty Pine was there. I mean, it was a who's who of like the area breweries. And, Jeez. Uh, I don't know why I was invited, but uh, it was a blast. We <laughs> we hung out all day, drank some great beer and and uh, drank some great beer. Oh, well, it's we, cool we made too, some beer too. You're friends with all of them. Like, how great is that? Yeah, it's fun. It's just a big, big group of beer lovers getting hydrated. That's, that's outstanding. Yeah. Those good times. Your people are the best people like that, though. So it's like, yeah, we're we're all interested in the same thing. You can come yeah. hang out. I mean, shoot, I don't pass like most people's litmus test for should he be invited. It's like, no. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, you must you must be this tall to ride this ride. And the beer people, the, the, it's much lower, and it, yeah, it really, I really is. It. it really is. Whether or not it's you so like true. like me, like I don't know a lot about beer, but I tell you what, I like drinking it. 
and I like talking to other people who like drinking it. So, yeah. and and the nice <laughs> thing is when you're with a bunch of people like that, uh, the brewer is a lot more open with her taps, and like they have a uh, barrel aged stout coming out. They're they're at three year anniversary is coming up this Saturday. So if you guys are in there, you go check it out. They're releasing their barrel aged stout, twelve percent. It's the first time they've barrel aged something. It's a blend of sherry barrels and whiskey oh shit now i forget it. sherry and something oh port whisk or sherry and port barrels uh oh. they blended it afterwards it was drinking really nice it was like 99 percent finished she just wanted to add a little more carbonation to it when we tried it but uh 12 percent that bad boy was dangerously easy to drink can they can yeah. they call it oh sherry and then the night they release <laughs> it just play that steve perry song on loop i think that would make everybody want to hang pretty themselves. pretty sure it's going to sell out that's what I meant to say. That's what yes, I meant to yes, say. that's. I'm not great. I'm not great at marketing, but I'm pretty sure that's a winner. <laughs> I like that. It's not just the standard whiskey combination. That sounds pretty good. I mean, like sherry and port. That's got to be pretty. Like, really get this like grapey fruity type thing happening. Well, and how that, California is that? Yeah, it was really right? fun because like you pick up some of like the, I'd say like a little bit more like acidity from the sherry bottles you really get like that deep written richness that port brings to the game like it wasn't just like you said it wasn't just like ah it tastes like whiskey like all the other barrel aged out so it was really yeah. fun I, you could actually taste the two different barrels a little bit in there and, and uh it was delicious and i plan on having a lot of it this coming saturday and, <laughs> nice and ubering and hope Hopefully I can Uber and I don't do the whole thing where my wife has to take my oh, phone I don't, from me. I don't think you should do I don't think you should do your Uber driving that day <laughs> yeah. who wants a ride beep beep uh and then finally i just I, I have to mention this over the week last weekend uh nick and nicole coley came over and i had this problem we have two wine fridges in fact you guys might be able to see if i turn this and i beat up my microphone a little bit here are two wine fridges i do and the delorean That's and classic. the delorean from back to the future of course uh, they have been overtaken by beer, by a lot of barrel age, like mostly Firestone barrel age stuff, just that we've collected over the years. And we got some really nice wine. The wife is a is a wine lover, and we went to load up the fridge, and it was like there is no room left. So wow. we we can fix that problem. So we invited Coley. It's a and, great and, problem. Yeah, Coley and Nick, because we have a ton of like duplicates and even a couple of triples, mm. and we just said, look, we're gonna make dinner, and we're gonna go through as many fucking bottles as we can. And we accomplished, like we went through well over 10 bottles and nothing was under 10%. It was all double digits. Dang. We drank so much beer. And then Nick found his way to my kegerator where I've got my uh, homebrewed brown, these nuts brown on tap as well as the, uh, <laughs> the as well as the Goza, uh, the Goza collab is on tap as well. So he, he definitely had some of that. And then we had a ton of barrel aged stuff and uh, there's, there's actually room in the fridges now. So uh, whew, we were... Hamsky. More room so, for these nuts, huh? Yeah, exactly. These nuts always needs more room. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it was a good time. So was it was it a Dr. Pepper morning the next day? No, you know what? Uh you know what fixes that is if you throw up the night of oh, you don't yeah. you don't get hung over the next morning. So I <laughs> Oh, I boy. solved my hangover. <laughs> Respect, man. Respect. Yeah, <laughs> nipped it right in the butt there. <laughs> All right, before we get to choose voicemail, let's answer the most important question of the night. In a world where craft beer is king, a world where muscles are bigger than growlers, only one tongue can guide us. One man, one tongue, one tongue jobber. In this world, we must find out what is flex drinking. Well... Let uh, let me send out a big thank you to Brian and Deb again. Oh yeah, for finally the came through Casa Agria. I didn't have any San Diego beer, and I was trying to drink something, you know, the West Coast since you know Brandon's on. Mm -hmm. And okay. uh, this is this is the best I could come up with. Uh, <laughs> now you went you went not, you went a really good route. They make yeah, no, so yeah not, so, not too shabby for the no, best yeah, you could do. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, so I'm drinking Westwise from Casa Agria and uh, the can and the old untapped, they, they don't agree on the ABV. Okay. I'd go um, with the can. The can. Yeah. I agreed. The yeah. can 6.8. They got to update the old untapped. It says 7.1, not too far off, but I mean, uh, legally they can be half a percent off. Well, then on the can is, art, this is illegal, but yeah, we'll see what happens. Yeah. All right. <laughs> um, but the description is much, 
much shorter than the last. Um, it says Thank Westwise God. is a modern West Coast IPA that features everyone's favorite combination of hops, Citra and Mosaic. And without remembering that the word modern was in the description, I thought to myself, wow, this is a real modern West Coast because of those hops, right? It doesn't have the classic Centennials, your mm -hmm. Chinooks, your Hoodags and Wobobs. <laughs> Um, uh -huh. <laughs> but yeah, starting out with the can uh, art on this those. one. Yeah, those it's, fell into uh, popularity years ago. It's super simple, but oh, very modern. brilliant, uh, bright, colorful. Absolutely yeah. love it. Totally fits the algorithm. I'm sure the West Coast price doesn't, but uh, that's <laughs> no, what happens when you lose a, for you. a bat. Sorry, intern. Um, so then on, on the schnoz, right? Super herby. Um, definitely tell it's a West Coast little bit pine on the back end mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. great color it's clear it's it's not hazy right it is a west no, coast it's a real west coast a little more yellow than that uh classic like copper uh, and then we warm up the tongue jobber <laughs> <laughs> dive right in <laughs> now that it's warmed up we can officially get in there okay so the description on untapped it says it's creamy i wouldn't describe this as creamy at all I'm glad to hear it. As most West Coast. Yeah. yeah, yeah West Coast, I wouldn't really that's describe weird as for creamy. A West Coast. Yeah. Um, it is crisp. It is super light. Uh, carbonation is real low on it. Uh, the, it's not real citrus forward. It's light flavored. The, the herbaceousness comes out a little bit on, on the palate. Real low end bitterness to this. Mm. This is like a super de duper easy drinking West Coast. Super de duper de. One hundred percent. Already approved. And especially at a six point eight, like that's just a little bit under my wheelhouse. Mm. But to me, this is like an all day drinking beer, and it's yeah. it's fabulous. Nice. You like to hover around yeah. like seven and a half, right? Big fan of the seven and a half. Yeah, that's that's a nice you, sweet spot for you. you. Even start creeping into the eights. Okay. Kind of a big fan of that. You know, and then once you get to like the nines and the tens, that's when we're partying. Well, at this old age, though, you got to be careful with those. Well, yeah, you never know. You're going to crack a can and crack yeah. your back. I don't right. know. <laughs> <laughs> you, you never know. You got to wait till you hit your 40s and you're, you're safe. <laughs> I don't know. I've been a really big fan of things moving towards like the 6.5 to 7 range. Okay. I mean, yeah. it just kind of works for me. Like, I, you know, I'm, I'm a littler dude. Not, I mean, like, never mind. It's going to get me in trouble. <laughs> but, yeah. but um but yeah I, I i don't know because like you were saying it's like i could I could, you know like this could be an all-day type drinker for me yeah. instead of having to go all the way to like session ipa territory where usually it's not all that great you know like the body is missing or something like that yeah, yeah i love that now they just brought it down so you could just drink like two or three and it's fine yep. it's not like you're gonna lose it that's my biggest harp about session ipas yeah is that like they're, they're all like the, the the whole idea is to like still bring the flavor through with a, a lower ABV, but like you what you yeah. said, it you completely lose all body, and it's yeah, just kind of like some people have managed to do it. I don't want to say like all of them are that way because for a while I worked at a, a brewery that had won twice and got two gold medals at GABF for their session IPA. Wow, who and was it that? Was, it, uh, Society Brewing. Down oh, okay. I love Society. Part time called Craig Mason. Them, yeah. But so that was called the Coachman, and it was just fantastic as far as just hot presence on the aroma and the palate. But you didn't feel like you were drinking some kind of little bitty beer. It was like okay. a regular beer. And yeah. so, awesome. uh, yeah, if you find that one, check it out. It's it's one of their core beers now, and they it makes it around a little bit more. So it'd be really easy for someone to probably send you some. <laughs> oh crap! Was that a hint? <laughs> whoever, well, whoever did Casa could get you that. Yeah. Wow. I mean, I, I see uh, Coachman at Trader Joe's fairly often, so maybe I'll have to slip some to fly. Really? Yeah. There you go. There you go. Love love TJ's around here, man. They got some good beers on tap. So. Yeah, get that uh, tiramisu stout. Tiramisu. <laughs> I saw, I've, I've had it years ago, but I had it. Banger. That. Yeah, it's, it's banger for the price. Three ninety eight. are you kidding me? <laughs> for a bomber. <laughs> uh, Brandon, are you a fan of Pliny the Younger? Yeah. I mean, I like the... Uh, the adventure of it all and yeah. i like that it changes a little bit each year but generally it's just a really well done triple ipa and uh very enjoyable yeah i i love it it's i've gotten to i've gotten to that old age where i don't love standing in line for it like i don't right right i don't do the whole line thing but uh if i if i can get my hands on it, i do like it but uh the home yeah. to your beer has never had it before 
And so he called midline for Pliny the Younger. <laughs> <laughs> of course, of course he did. Midline? Also, midline, oh, excellent. yeah. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah. This and, is going to uh, be choice. He, he'd already <laughs> had a few other Russian River offerings at this point. So here's the homie, chew your beer. Hello. No one is available to take your call. Please leave a message after the tone. Hey, yo, what's up, Crap Beer Republic? Chew your beer here. I'm at the Surly Goat in Encino. It's Wednesday. I got my tickets for my honey, the youngster, homie. <laughs> this would actually be my first time ever having youngsters. I've been uh, chasing it for about 14 years of my craft beer career, homie. So, yeah, Holmes, I got my three tickets. Chilling with my boy Marvin, eating some fucking cheese fries. Uh, they're giving me bubble guts already, so let's hope, <laughs> let's hope it doesn't come out the other end, home. So yeah, I'm drinking a TSTS pills. I just had their their new porter. Uh, and waiting for seven o'clock, Holmes, until they tap this uh, younger keg, Holmes. Uh, other than that, homie, this is true your beer. You're listening to Crap Beer Republic. <laughs> And this is Pliny Watch 2023, Holmes. <laughs> Looking for Pliny the Youngster. <laughs> I can watch it, Holmes. Peace out, eh? He's I, fucking wild. I don't know if he could handle a triple IPA after all he's had to drink at that point. I wonder how that went for him. Yeah, stri- feel, strictly uh, from a biological sense, I hope it does come out the other end. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> there's, there's a preferred end. <laughs> Oh dear! I well, just hope they come out with the uh, Pliny the Youngster now. They, they yeah. should. Like the double dry hopped version is Pliny yeah. the Youngster. Or maybe yeah. make it like a session. They, you yeah. know. <laughs> there you go. That. Oh, I I'd forgotten all about that guy. He is so cool. I know that guy. Oh, you do know Chew? Yeah, I do. It's See, just been a while. Chew. It's been it's been it's been a while. Yeah. But, uh, you know, wow. As soon as I heard that voice, I'm like, Oh yeah, Holmes. Dude, that's a Holmes Vato Holmes. Yeah. No, he's red. He's the uh, best. Choose the best. Uh, 805-538-BEER is the number to call if you guys want to leave a voicemail. I, the first news story I have here, I, I pulled purposely to talk about on this show because, Brandon, you kind of got uh, very intimately familiar with this one. In fact, you talked to Tommy, but the Lost Abbey yeah. downscaling... Uh, their plans are beginning to unfold, and Pizza Port, ironically, is going to take over the old Lost Abbey Port spot. There's a lot of moving parts with this. Uh, Lost Abbey and Port Brewing will become separate business entities. Lost Abbey will shut down the tap room on May 1st, and then they're going to basically contract brew or looking to contract brew after that. They're going to continue operating their other facilities. In addition to the brewing assets, Pizza Port will take over the intellectual property for Port Brewing and the uh, THC brands, which I was surprised that he didn't hang on to Port. Uh, And then afterwards, Lost Abbey's three satellite tap rooms and the IP of Lost Abbey uh, and any other ongoing businesses concerned will be part of Tommy's business. So uh, I saw you got to talk to him about this. It seems like a I don't know. Is this a good thing? Or at at first it seemed kind of weird. Then it seemed like, oh, this is bigger than it started as. Yeah, because at first they were just looking to, uh, you know, downsize their operations at their at the place they've been for 17 years. Right. So which is in San Marcos in our North County. Um, Original stone brewing facility. Exactly. Yeah. So over in Mata Way. And um, that place, when they took it over, was rather small. And they continued to grow it and grow it and grow it to where they took over most of one building and spots in the building across from them uh, in this little industrial park. But things were going well. And, and back then, you know, you if things were going well for your business and you were a brewery, it wasn't like now. It's like, let's <laughs> charge ahead and we're going to you know, move this thing forward. We're going to be like the next stone or something like that. Right. Um, so they had a 30 barrel brew house and they had capacity to go to what I forget what it was like maybe like 25,000 30,000 barrels a year but they never got anywhere close to that yeah and so they were like okay look Belgian beers not as popular as as they once were which for me is like the worst I I love Belgian (laughs) beers I love saisons in particular Brett saisons I mean like everything the Lost Abbey does I really 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 appreciate a lot. And that even goes for their hoppy beers that are becoming part of the other portfolio. At any rate, 
they want to just go ahead and say, okay, let's sell the stainless off, sell the, sell the corresponding seller, and we'll get something in here smaller that really fits our needs, get it down to like, you know, 15,000, 10 to 15,000 uh, barrels a year type range and uh, renegotiate our lease and give back some of the building to the landlord. And so they were able to kind of do that to some degree on the uh, square footage with the landlord, but they didn't get exactly what they wanted. And then it came to the point where, you know, their, their number one beer, uh, best-selling beer is called Mongo. It's their double IPA. Yeah. And that production of that had already moved over to uh, Pete's Ports production facility over in Carlsbad. Oh. Well, they were making all of that. So they really just, it's like, we don't need this 30 barrels so bad. Uh, <laughs> And then Peaceport eventually said, you know, the owners of Peaceport are co-owners of the Lost Abbey brand, which was the Lost Abbey and Port um, Brewing. Right, because Tommy with, worked for Pizza Port first, right? Right. And then they, they got in together to open up this new venture back in 2006. It was new then, anyway. But it was their, you know, it was their first packaged beer. Mm-hmm. They had... It, Back then, you couldn't even get, like, they didn't have the whole um, production facility for pizza port. So they had things like, you know, their, their red and their IPAs wiped out and some other cool things. But it was it basically had every style you could want under one roof. And it was the quality of pizza port and, the, and quite frankly, like the mastery of Tommy when it comes to things like barrel-aged beers and Belgian yeah. beers. I mean, he, he knocks it out of the park consistently. He wrote the and book. He you get, he's continuing to write the book and now well, it's about still writing the book. Yeah. But um, at any rate, it became advantageous for pizza port and, and kind of like one of the only ways to go for pizza port to go ahead and just say, you know what, we're just going to buy that stainless. We're going to take over the facility. We'll close down the tasting room. They might open another t- a tasting room for a smaller one for um, pizza port at some point, take over the port brewing brand, the hop concept brand THC, because those are hoppy beers and they mm-hmm. excel at selling hoppy beers. I mean, their whole yeah. sales force, that's what they do all day long. So it's like, great, just give them more weapons. And then that allows lost Abbey to move out, operate their three tasting rooms that they have and find another place to brew, go into an alternating proprietorship, go into uh, contract brewing with somebody. If that should be the case, they're seeking investors. So they want to like get to a point where they can, you know, be Mm self-sufficient. But um, yeah, like you said, a lot of moving pieces and it wasn't exactly what people thought were going to happen, including Tommy and probably, you know, the Marsaglias from uh, Pizza Port. But um, I think we're, it's, it's a good example of kind of like where this industry is going the challenges people face on multiple levels. And it's just, wow, we have this award-winning, amazingly, yeah, amazing, esteemed brewing operation that is having trouble putting all the pieces together, making it work for the current marketplace. And um, yeah, it's, it's, it's something to watch for sure. But it's better than watching you know, a brewery go out of business or just be sure. completely helpless and have no options at all. Um, I look forward to seeing what happens. They are going to be introducing new beers from the lost to into the lost Abbey portfolio. So okay. while they'll be taking out IPAs from port and hop concept, I'm sure they'll brew their own new IPAs that are, you know, Tommy and his crew's recipe that and introduce sense. those to the tap room. So it's not like, Oh man, I, I, I only like going in there for the port brewing beer. Because like, well, <laughs> right. I like IPAs. It's like, well, something else will be there and it'll be right along the same vein because they came up with those recipes as well. So it'll be interesting to see what they do. And I think that it'll be fun, quite frankly, to watch an introduction of, of new beers to Lost Abbey. All under Lost Abbey because I don't know. I as much as I love that company, I always thought it was really strange to have all these sub brands. It was kind of weird. So hard for anybody to understand, especially with Pizza Port and Port Brewing. Yeah, like, right. Oh, well, which is which? And so many people, like the layman, is just completely confused. If they like True. either one, they don't know what's happening. And it's probably good from a clarification of just you know, what the business is and what it produces and. It'll be nice to see that. That that said, Lost Abbey will continue to make their tiny bubbles uh, line <laughs> of Brett beers, and they'll continue to make the Charisma line of hard sparkling teas. So there'll still be two sub brands. If you're really into sub brands, you can get those. He loves those sub brands. You know, a, a similar thing happened up here in the LA area. Uh, Celador Ales they lost their lease on their brew facility. 
they found a contract brew and at the same time they transferred ownership. So now they are contract brewing elsewhere. I don't even know where they won't say, but I'm sure someone yeah. knows. But it's interesting um, with that, right? How people get so weird about contract brewing. Yeah. Like it's, it's so bad. I mean, it's your recipe. So what, what's it matter? Yeah. As long as the degree of oversight is such that you're seeing it or you're doing your own Q and QA, I would assume. Um, yeah. but it's just not a bad thing anymore. I think, in fact, I think it's how a lot of brands are going to stay alive either by doing it. Like these large, these large brewing companies that have all this capacity and nothing to do with it. Yeah. You know, well, I mean, let's contract brew for somebody or vice versa. It's like, well, uh, things are getting expensive, but I can still afford to contract brew over there. And, Run a small tasting room, you know? Well, and I don't want to out any smaller breweries, but I know of at least a couple smaller breweries that were contract brewing at Alesmith just so they could package. Right, right. So it's still the recipe. They still have oversight. Yeah, and the, and the crew over at Alesmith, where I also used to work. Um, <laughs> just worked all of San Diego. Oh, I worked at Stone, too. But, <laughs> but, you know, the crew at Alesmith definitely know what they're doing, and they have a state-of-the-art awesome yeah. Incredible oh, brew house. So um, I don't see that as a negative. But for the longest time, it was just like, well, oh, your contract brewing, oh, you must suck. I'm like, well, why? Why right. does they suck? Did they the have beer help suffer? from people I mean, who know what they're doing? If it, yeah. nothing else. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So uh, in, a, in a weird turn of events, Brew Dog, everyone's favorite. Everyone's here, yeah. Oh, God. Those assholes. Damn great, dog. Great, great people. <laughs> yeah, great people. Great company to work for. Uh, Brew Dog, the the most punk brewery in all of breweries, has partnered with Budweiser in China to quote spur major expansion in the world's biggest beer market. So not only are they already terrible people, <laughs> uh huh. Now they just get even worse. Yeah. Well, and, and how punk of them to to team up with Budweiser. Budweiser. Yeah. yeah. Super punk. Thanks, guys. Man, they that, wanna... now there's an operation that just keeps getting overextended as hell. And I don't understand <laughs> how that how it keeps working out. It's like, oh, man, we'll just, yeah, we'll pick that up. We'll pick that up. We'll go international, do all these kinds of things. Like, how is this working out for y'all? There must be so much behind the scenes. But, uh, yeah, this one's, that's, stay classy. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and honestly, I don't know anybody that drinks brew dog, yet they keep going to other countries and expanding. Well, Magic. that's because they're the only people who haven't had it who might have it. Well, that's true. <laughs> I, yeah, I was going to say, I think I saw one thing of theirs. Uh, I went to a Total Wine a couple weeks ago, which I hate Total Wine, by the way. I can't stress enough how much I hate. It's like going to a beer rummage sale. <laughs> because <laughs> Mine's every, not that bad. Really, every four pack uh, pick up, you got to look for like the can on date. Because, oh, yeah. That's, oh, that's always good for them, though. Yeah. yeah, but it's like the fact that you have to do it there. It yeah, yeah. It turns like a seven minute trip to like your local bottle shop or you know little beer store. It turns like a seven minute trip and like a forty five minute trip because everything you look at, you're like, all right, like when was oh this was six months ago. Oh, I don't want a hazy that's been on the shelf for six months. Like, oh, you're putting fruited sours, you know, on the shelf outside of refrigeration. I don't want any of that. Why would I want any of that? Congratulations for them not exploding. Yeah, right? It's just like, it's crazy. Yeah. Can't stand it. Ours isn't too bad, but uh, you ha you do have to read the labels or read the, the dates a little bit. Yeah. I found that out when I was, uh, I saw Evil Twin was on a shelf once and I was like, oh. oh, that's pretty sweet. Evil Twin's pretty legit. And then I found out that the beer was on the shelf for two years. And I said, hey, There's that's not pretty legit. Yeah. <laughs> that's unlegit. Well, yeah, I don't know. Was it like a, like some kind of massive imperial stout? No, the aging for you. Just, <laughs> just some weird four pack, or whatever they did. You know, probably uh, had like okay. Jesus in the title. Even more know. Jesus, but yeah, uh, probably yeah. is either even more Jesus or the world's longest name. One or the other. Yeah, correct. Yeah, so right. but yeah, it was it was very undaddy. I would like uh, to say. <laughs> yes. Okay. Uh, in a weird turn of events, it turns out Bill Gates hates good beer and has acquired a three point eight stake in Heineken that is worth about nine hundred and two million dollars. Makes inferior computers, buys inferior beer. It's just horrible beer. You know, I, uh, this is really funny. So I got to talk about this Heineken thing for a second. Okay. Because I can't remember who I was with the other day, but the the Heineken got brought old. for some reason. Yeah. And this guy goes, you know, I've never had a good Heineken. 
And I said, yeah, that's because there's no such thing. <laughs> <laughs> True. Like, you can't have a good Heineken because yeah. they're just all shitty. Well, well, they hit the shelves already skunked, unless that's your thing, you know. Yeah, it's so bad. Yeah, pretty bad. Uh, we'll, we'll finish things off with this one. A drunk student was busted for urinating on an American Airlines business class passenger. I'm going to need some context. <laughs> he may need some water. Uh, oh, God, names. Arian Vorha. Sorry, bud. A 21-year-old Indian national student in the U.S. was arrested in Delhi late Saturday as he stepped off American Airlines flight AA-292 from JFK. The pilot radioed ahead to warn of a disruptive customer who was heavily intoxicated, officials said. He was repeatedly arguing with the operating crew, was not willing to be seated, and continuously endangering the safety of crew and aircraft. After disturbing the safety of fellow pass passengers, he finally urinated on a passenger, the airline said. <laughs> well, the passenger just sat there and took it? <laughs> well, what, what do you do at that point? Yeah, I mean, like, you don't have out? so much room to move. Right. It's because they've taken away <laughs> the, all the leg room. The damage is done. Yeah. Uh, Vor Vohra, who was traveling home from his, or excuse me, who was traveling home for his sister's wedding, later told cops that he tried to go to the bathroom, but the door was locked. The, and I, I shit you not, this is what they wrote. The peed on passenger was not, <laughs> was not identified beyond the fact that it was a man in seat 15 G. That's not real. That's Vor some great alliteration. Yeah, right. Vora apologized and begged him not to file the complaint, which he appears to have gone along with, noting that the arrest followed a complaint filed by the airline and not the alleged soaked victim. Still, Vora continued to misbehave after being led from the police by security officials. Uh, Ma oh, God. Devesh Kumar Mala, the airport's deputy head of police, uh, said he vowed to take the strongest possible action. American Airlines also canceled his return flight to the Big Apple and banned him from all future flights. Wow. I just I just don't understand how you just sit there and let somebody pee on you. <laughs> still still on that one, huh? I mean, the, yeah, there would be I, like I, a couple of seconds of being peed on as I you know, sp you know, took off my seatbelt and sprung into action. Right. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I can take anybody who's urinating at any point. It doesn't even matter. Like, they're kind of incapacitating themselves. So <laughs> it's like, what What are the odds the one guy in like 15 G, is that what it said? Yeah. His dream has just been to be pissed <laughs> on oh, in an airplane, you know? Dear Penthouse, I never thought I'd be writing this letter. Right? He's just like undoing his pants and in his mind he's just like oh my god please do it Finally, here <laughs> and then it is. the guy like does the zipper down and he's like oh my god it's really gonna happen and then like <laughs> flow occurs and he's just like on cloud nine like sir sir no, it's okay it's okay we're good we're good <laughs> yeah like it's okay yeah. Just, yeah. just let it happen he's let already peeing let him finish <laughs> it's not really gonna get that much worse it's all right <laughs> and you know what I bet it was Heineken. I bet he had too many Heinekens on the flight. <laughs> that's probably what it was. Uh, that pee is gonna stink. I was say, if that's the case, though, he probably wouldn't have been that drunk. Maybe he should have had some Heinekens. <laughs> maybe like maybe he was drinking percent. Heineken Zeros, but he didn't know it was non-alcoholic. <laughs> sure. We've you all know, been there. So he just like... No, nah, he yeah. was a Zero drinking Heinekens. There, oh, there we go. Ew. There we go. So uh, anyways, uh, zip it up on American Airlines, would you? Yeah. Or zip it up. If, and if somebody's peeing on you, are you really just gonna take it? That's... <laughs> Come on. Only if you're in 15G. <laughs> Otherwise, no. Don't sit in 15G. Oh, boy. All right. That is the last of the day. I think that's <laughs> quite the high note to go on. And Brandon is now so glad he hung out. <laughs> you know what? I am. That was really, really, really something. <laughs> uh, I'm going to some music over here. Brandon, thanks for hanging out with us tonight. That was a lot of fun. Yeah, nice hanging out with wow, you, man. Thanks for having me. It was great. Absolutely. Uh, don't forget, follow San Diego Beer News at SD Beer News and, of course, San Diego Beer dot news for the news. Uh, go check yeah. it out, especially if you're heading down there. Any other uh, socials or anything I, I missed? No, you nailed it, but um, I would go ahead and uh, sign up for our free newsletter because it comes yes. once a week, and there's all sorts of interesting stuff there, even if you're not from San Diego. You just dream of being in San Diego. Yeah, just like Flex, just dreaming of San Diego over there. That's all I do. Yeah. Hey, go Brew so, Crew. 
Yeah. <laughs> One day uh, I'll make my way out there. Nice. You better. You better, you son of a bitch. Uh, follow us at Craft Beer Republic. And of course, Flex at Flex Me Beer underscores in between craftbeerrepublic.com. And if you want to leave a voicemail, 805 538 Beer 2337. I believe that is everything. Thank you all for listening. I hope you're staying very well hydrated. And on that note, good night, everybody. Yeah.